back to when I was eight years old. I, I've got papers, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a rocket scientist. All my pictures are of uh, space shuttles and rockets. It's just something that's always fascinated me. So I'm Ryan McDevitt, I'm the co-founder and CEO at Benchmark Space Systems. We are commercializing my PhD research about micro propulsion for small satellites, so helping small satellites move around in space. I uh, kind of saw that there was an opportunity to actually commercialize that to the small satellite operators. So co-founded the company in 2017. And we've been building the company here in Vermont ever since. When we first got started, we had nothing. And, and one of the things about space is you're building hardware, and that hardware has to get tested, and that test equipment is really expensive. The University of Vermont had thermal vacuum chambers and vibration tables and all these different pieces of hardware. Um, it was such a help, particularly at the beginning when we had nothing. And so we're kind of in the fortunate position now that we can kind of give back a little bit and help their students. We've got some equipment that they don't have, um, and so we're kind of able to pay it back a little bit. There are a few companies out there that build propulsion for satellites, but it's for big satellites. So you can't put a $10 million propulsion system on a $1 million spacecraft. That just doesn't make sense. So we had to figure out how can we make more cost-effective propulsion for small satellites. One of the things that we think about a lot is the best propulsion is the one that you can have tomorrow. That's better than in 10 years, I'll give you something that's you know two times better. Those are the things that we focus on. How can we get it into the hands of our customers faster and how can we do it less expensively? All satellites that have been developed since the beginning of time are essentially designed to be single use. They go up, they have exactly as much propellant as they need for the mission, and they run out and they come back to Earth and they burn up. The big trend right now is to have the satellites closer to Earth and refuelable systems. When you're that close to Earth, these satellites only last six months to two years by themselves. You put them up, they orbit degrades, they burn up when they come back into space. Our propulsion system means they can stay up three, five, ten times longer. We were able to be part of the first on-orbit demonstration mission for on-orbit refueling. Working with our partners, Orbit Fab, they're building the gas station, and we're building the propulsion system that can be refueled at that gas station. And what we'd like to believe is in the next three to five years, there'll be a proliferation of these gas stations, there'll be a lot of satellites with our propulsion systems on board, and now you can get away from that single-use, disposable satellite model into reusable, upgradable, refuelable systems. Lots of people are building paper rockets out there. That's the easy part. The hard part is, can you actually execute on it? The holy grail is on-orbit demonstration of your hardware. Until you have that, there's always going to be some doubts. Even though you know we do hundreds of hours of testing, we do hundreds of hours of simulation, but until it works, it hasn't worked, right? Until it's worked in space, it hasn't worked. And so we're talking to customers from all over the world who need the products that we're building, who are interested in what we're doing, and the key to unlock that is that on-orbit demonstration of the hardware. So we were supposed to have this hardware go up in January of 2021. They got delayed, and the original delay was going to be March, and then they got delayed again till June. And so the first launch window for this new launch, we've gathered the whole team. Everyone is, you know, amped up. We are in the countdown. Everything looks great. Weather is good. Start the countdown, right? T minus 15. Everyone's cheering. And at T minus 11 seconds, they call off the launch. Within three minutes of that call off, I mean, everyone was gone. Then the following day, ready again, we've got the launch window, and it's like, okay, sure, sure, it's gonna launch this time. When we got into that countdown, at like T minus five seconds, I started to just, oh my gosh, we have three propulsion systems on board. Everything we've been building for the past you know, four years is on there. And there was just that minute of, oh my goodness, is this actually gonna go off the way that we expect? It was flawless, it went perfectly, they get into space, they deploy all three spacecraft, everything checks out. For it to go that smoothly was a huge relief. As far as the team goes, I mean, we have people that were joining us from all over the world that have come to work here in Vermont to, to support what we're doing. For a lot of people, I mean, this is a, a dream, right? They physically touched, they built, they designed hardware that's now in space. And that's the thing that makes this so much fun for me, getting to see all these people fulfilling my childhood dream, but also their childhood dream, is, that's huge, so really exciting.